You are the one I love. We must not reproach ourselves for unlived lives. Are you not happy that Jane is wed to Mr. Colin? I would rather sleep in a drain than consent to be happy. The place from which you come is different. Hammersmith, I am having a bit of a strange postmodern moment here. I cannot marry you. You are not a maid. I think you're a girl who's a very long way from home. You're supposed to be so bloody incandescent with integrity and you misjudge everybody. You misjudge me. everything with Darcy and I have absolutely nowhere to go but that's all right the worst that can happen is that I just die the worst is I never see Darcy again ever happy face <laughs> happy face Swellerando, some of his guests. What's this? Do we know? The pleasure of attending this one. Uh, <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, mm. it is a poor host who neglects to keep his guests abreast of local news. I have asked Miss Bingley to be my wife, and she has consented to the task. Thank you for your attention. Dinner is at six. <gasps> You must come. Come. May I be the first to congratulate? She's gone where? It does not say where. It says with whom. But Lydia doesn't run off with Bingley. She goes with Wickham. Charles and I are afflicted by the same ennui. Society bores us. Our conversations with Miss Price have persuaded oh, no. us... Oh, yes, Miss Price! ...have persuaded us that more inspiriting company is to be found elsewhere. Silly girl. How dare you? How dare you sneer at my daughters when it is you, you, who has infected their minds? With what, Mrs Bennet? What have I said to any that of you? That you would marry Mr Darcy. Mama, Mr Bingley is a gentleman. If he has gone away with Lydia, it can only mean one thing. He intends to make her his wife. <laughs> this is Lydia Bingley. She has no hat fit for town. I must return to Longbourn immediately. Shoes! Shoes! What shoes does she have? I... Oh, Mr. Bennett shall feel the weight of this expense! Your mother cannot be allowed to believe that. She can till she is delivered home. Then my father shall have charge of it. It is time he rose from his chair for the good of the family. <sighs> I urged Bingley to love another. That he should choose my little sister did not occur to me. <laughs> In unguarded moments, Miss Price, you are given to the queerest ejaculations. Huh? You protest something should be quite other than it is. Lizzie should be here for Darcy. Lydia should have gone off with Wickham. She should marry Wickham, ultimately. Good Lord. I should now be married to Bingley. Yes. I consider our lives and I find I prefer your version. Will you escort my mother home? 
I thought you would want to... Mr. Collins does not care for me to be apart from him. Longbourn is no longer my home, Miss Price. I am no longer my mother's child. I am my husband's wife. Mrs. Bennet is indisposed? She is excited by the prospect of a double marriage. Mr. Bingley and Lydia. I think that unlikely. Me too. Let's hope we're both wrong because he's run off with her. What? Why do you suppose Bingley has done this, Mr. Darcy? Any ideas? Any little twinges of guilt about this situation? No. You don't really do guilt, do you? You do whatever the hell you want and afterwards call it principle. Bye, then. Do you have the grace, I wonder, to wish me well? Good luck. That I already have. Clearly, you and Caroline are made for each other. If Mr. Bennett has taken it upon himself to walk about the garden, I shall pursue him like a harpy. Hannam! Oh. Hannam! Oh! Oh! myself, Mr. Bennett. Oh! Mr. Bennett! The most extraordinary thing! However extraordinary, madam, it cannot match the adventure that awaits you in your drawing room. Lady Catherine sends us gifts. Gentlemen, allow me to introduce you to Mrs. Bennet, Mr. Probity Collins, currently resting after his exertions at the dining table, Dr. Elysium Collins, favouring us with a tobacco mix of his own devising, and Mr. Symbol Collins enlivening a dull Tuesday evening with his amusing trousers. I trust, madam, you shall come to call me Tinkler. Mrs. Bennet will dedicate herself to that end. Ah, oh, I'm delighted to find Miss Amanda Price of Hammersmith. I cannot yet hear Lydia, which is unusual, but nevertheless... She is to be married! Mr. Bennet, that is what I tried to say. Married, madam. Anyone we know? Mr. Charles Bingley. This is extraordinary. Mr. Bennett, might we speak a moment with Mrs. Bennett? So off piece, it is just insane. Lydia is to be married. Goodness. It seems barely plausible that she is old enough to cut a slice of cake, let alone keep a husband. Where is this marriage to be? I suppose I am obliged to attend. Mr. Bennett, may I speak frankly? I think Mrs. Bennett may be mistaken. What? Let him read the letter, please. <sighs> Poor old Tinkler. He will not want her after this. You are of the opinion that Mr. Bingley means to despoil Lydia and not marry her? I am of that opinion, madam, yes. The girl has thrown herself away, my dear. It is a shame. But her descent cannot be arrested by intemperate demonstrations of contrition in my library. Mr. Bennett, you can't just read a book. You must do something. What do you recommend, Miss Price? I don't know, but... God, you're her father! I'm not suggesting you challenge Bingley to a duel, which is the thing in the novel your wife dreads, but you must at least try to stop Lydia just flinging her maidenhead out the window. Lydia writes of a place unfettered by convention. Will you take me there? Hammersmith, Miss Price. It is time we visited your house. Hammersmith, Miss Price. This is where you live. Mr. 
Mr. and Mrs. Bennett. I think the time has probably come. For... There you are. Welcome all. How was the road? Mr. Wickham, how unexpected. Is it? Did Miss Price not tell you if she asked me to ride ahead to make arrangements? Uh, I quite forgot. Sir Reginald and Lady Nora are safely on their way to Bath. Good. Who, pray, is Sir Reginald? Miss Price's father, Mrs. Ben. The house, alas, is quite locked up. The servants absolutely insist on travelling with Sir Reginald and Lady Nora, which is inconvenient, of course, but most devoted. <gasps> Lady Nora? That's a perfectly good name for the wife of a successful fishmonger. What are you doing here? What's the point in helping me? Because your face is most amusing when surprised. <laughs> I do as you do. Perhaps you, Bingley. Where is Lizzie? At Bath. When Mama and Papa go on their expeditions, they always take their guests. Mr Wickham, I speak to you as one gentleman to another with the expectation of discretion that entails. I understand, sir. Whatever you confide shall die inside me. My youngest daughter, Lydia, has run away with Charles Bingley. I do not know how to proceed. I cannot think how to find my daughter. Well, surely they are gone to the Jerusalem. That is the end of note here, is it not, Miss Price? If it is your belief they have come to Hammersmith, we must thither immediately to prevent wrongdoing. Mr Bennett, sir, permit me to be your guide. Oh, Mr Wickham, how fortunate we are to find you here. Hear that sound, George? <laughs> That's Jane Austen spinning in her grave like a cat in a tumble dryer. My child! Oh, my child! Oh, excellent. Look at this. You find me making a spear. Russo. You know, <laughs> noble savage, so forth. The book you lent me. Why does my daughter weep, Mr Bingley? Fundamental skills that we have forfeited through privilege. <laughs> I expect it's because she's bored. <laughs> bored. Our social experiment has proved dispiritingly unchallenging. Hammersmith is not the Amazon. We brought my daughter here alone. To spend the night with you alone. Tell me, sir, what species of experiment is that? Ah, uh, well met, well met. Uh, Bingley, Miss Lydia and I have just now returned from the opera. I see. And the problem with the opera, of course, is uh, that one cannot... Sir, will you have for... done? Your subterfuge is well-meaning, but it is puerile and demeans us all. There is no opera in Hammersmith. You've just arrived from God knows where. That much is plain. Miss Lydia and I came yesterday and have spent our hours philosophizing. No. Although her father would have it, we've been making the beast with two backs. Time to take the weapons from the wall, Mr. Bingley. Pick up your damn spear and take guard. Oh, Mr. Bingley! Mr. Take Bingley. up your stick, damn you! You driveling anarchist imbecile! No! Does he do something? Imbecile! Is it? Charles, put that down! Driveling, snarling! Oh. No. Imbecile! No. No. Number 18, Clifford Street. Quick as you can. Go. I sent for my physician in Mayfair. He will be here within the hour. In an hour, he could be dead. He's lost half a pint of blood in two minutes, Darcy. You do the math. Mr. Bennett. Shocking business. Bleeding on a fellow's rugs. This time of year. What could Lady Catherine say? This physician of yours, Mr. Darcy, can he do stitches? Stitches? He is not a dressmaker. Let the woman I love run through my fingers like mercury, and now her father lies dying by my hand. Mr. 
Bennett needs stitches. Please tell me you understand that. There is a woman here. She's arranged medical matters for me in the past. Just bring her directly. Wickham. You are a bastard, but you are the right bastard at the right time. One does one's best. Everyone you know, Miss Price, will one day prize your fingers from the raft and watch you drown. It's the way of the world. Everyone. Except me. Miss Price. I have to find Elizabeth. She needs to be with her father right now. Nothing else matters. I believe if I am compelled to hear that name again, I... <gasps> Where the piggy now have you been? Hello, Michael. 75 bloody texts. An hour and a half of voicemail. I was in a place that didn't have very good coverage. Sorry. You've lost weight. You haven't. Your bum's got bigger. My bum has not got bigger. It's the dress that makes it look big. I cannot tell you what a pleasure it is to be discussing the size of my bum. Look, I know that you have a lot of shouting you need to do at me, but right now I need to find Elizabeth. Where is she? Piranha got her a job. Nanny, she cleans the kid's teeth with chalk. Michael, I have to find that girl. Please take me on your bike. I sold it. You s sold the Ducati? Why? To buy us a holiday in Barbados. The original idea was that it should be a honeymoon. Let's go anyway, yeah? Skip the getting married bit, because that seems to be a problem. Have the honeymoon and see how we get on. Thank you. Is that thank you, yes? Not thank you, no. Thank you, but right now, can you lend me 20 quid so I can get a taxi to take me to this girl so I can tell her something terrible about her dad? I said I'd sold the Ducati. I didn't say I hadn't got wheels. disordered by opium. What is this dreadful place? This is London. My London. I will tell you this, Miss Price. And it is true. The assembly rooms at Meryton. I danced with you, not in order to spare my friend, but because I wanted to dance with you. Our entire acquaintance has been informed by my refusal to acknowledge this, for I have been blinded by pride. Charles Georgiana Wickham. You. For I was calamitously mistaken in my judgment of you all. A fellow less pig-headed would have realized from the start that what I felt for you was... What I felt for you was... Love. I love you. I followed you to this infernal place because I would follow you anywhere. I would harrow hell to be with you. What about Caroline? I cannot marry Caroline Bingley. Do not tell me it's because she's not a maid. Of course she is a maid. I cannot marry her because I do not love her. I love you. Okay. Before we go any further, there is someone you have to meet. Right now. Take my hand. 
We're going to find Elizabeth Bennet. Yeah, ma'am, but I told him not to mess with me. And what colour's he? Surfeit of Negroes. Yeah. Tourette's. Sorry. Gentlemen here tend not to speak in the bus. That's my dress. Uh, yes. It looks well on you. It would not fit me now. I'm acrobiotic. You must go back, Miss Bennett. Your father needs you urgently. The gentleman on the bath chair. I have seen his likeness. Tinky Winky. I like to see the television, but I do not care to hear it. What is this of my father? He needs you. He's had an accident. His life is in danger. I'm sorry, there isn't time to dress it up. I must switch off the appliances. My employers are most anxious about the size of their footprint. This gentleman has just come through the door. I hazarded as much. Doctor and Mr. Rosenberg have taken Rachel to the cinema. I must leave a note. Doctor and Mr. Doctor Rosenberg is a lady. Yes. The world is greatly changed. Michael. Dan, look, I need to use the telephone. I've got to call my boyfriend. Yes, of course. Elizabeth Bennett is lending me her mobile. Just close the appliances. Elizabeth, leave that. We must go. <laughs> Darcy! <laughs> Mr Fitzwilliam Darcy of Pemberley. I am your wife. I do not recall marrying you, madam. I think I would have noticed if I had. We have been married nearly 200 years. Look. this now. Taxi! Oh, he's coming! Oh, damn, I've got no money. He's already paid by credit card. Oh. I summoned him by text. Oh. I was born out of time, Miss Price. Out of time and out of place. <sighs> Goodness, here's Piranha. Oh, God Piranha. almighty, Manda! I know, I know. I know. Darcy, yeah? Looks like a Greek statue and talks like one. What do you mean, Darcy? Darcy's some ponce in a book. Some todger twitching Nancy boy. It's Darcy. What is this curious person? Is it some sort of village idiot? Or a clown? Oh, oh clown? Yeah, that's me. Oh, oh, Michael, no! I do not want this! I'm afraid, sir, I can consent to be struck only by my friends. You and I lack introduction. Michael Dolan, how do you do? Oh! Oh! How dare you lay violent hands upon Miss Price? I said stop! All right! This is what we're going to do. You are taking him through there right now. The rest of us are going to say goodbye nicely and watch you step through all that plumbing into fictional Georgian England, and that'll be it. And then we'll all spend the rest of our lives in therapy. It's going to be fine. Miss Price. No, no. Miss Price from anyone. You're going, or I'll take a swing at you myself. The door does not oblige. It bloody well does oblige. This is Darcy and Elizabeth Bennet coming through, for God's sake. There we go. Oh. Oh. It is your need that opens it. This is ridiculous. You should see this, Piranha. I'm talking ten minutes, Max. Amanda, I'm black. 
What's more, I cannot live without chocolate, electricity, or bog paper. Well, they have chocolate. Even for 10 minutes. Okay. Sorry. Amanda, you go through that door even for 10 seconds, and I'll be gone. And I will not be coming back. Oh, Michael, please don't do this macho brinkmanship thing now. I'm trying to send him home so he can get married to her. I'm trying to you make... You go through there, and I'm gone. This ends. One way or the other. You walk around London like that, you'll get beaten up. Come on. Amanda! I heard you, Michael, but what else can I do? Ready? Would you be so kind as to direct me to a private room? I'm experiencing an overwhelming desire to sleep. at the right time. At the same time, Miss Price, the necessary links that must be forged, the connections of mutual understanding, they cannot be conjured so. I know. I am so concerned for my father. We must send for Charlotte Lucas. Her comprehension of anatomy is... Charlotte's gone. She's not here. Don't, don't, don't worry about Charlotte. She's gone to be a missionary in Africa. Africa. What have I done? You haven't done anything. It's a joke between us when we were children that if life became irreparably miserable and lonely, one could always run away to Africa. Someone so handy with the needle. That's clever of you, sir, to insist upon returning home. Oh, I always prefer to die at home. time of crisis, Longbourn requires a firm hand on the tiller, so says Lady Catherine, therefore, ecce homo. Who is this? This is my husband, Mr. Collins. But, Jimmy Cricket, you cannot marry Collins. That will not do at all. You must marry Bingley. Lizzie! <laughs> Get changed. Here. Quickly. She has married Collins. I know, cock up from start to finish. But if your father sees you like that, he will have a bloody heart attack. My father is here. <laughs> um, it is too late. I have died. I hesitate to dispute with you when you have received a blow to the head. But you speak nonsense. Can it be, Lizzie? Why, Lizzie? It can, sir. But where is her hair? She left it in Hammersmith. And what is that infernal smell? That she brought back. No nurse should venture forth without it. It may sting a little, like the devil, but it is little more than you deserve. Dearest, silliest papa. <laughs> What else for Miss Price? Where am I to sleep? I am grateful to you, George. The way you put yourself tonight is not my concern. 
Perhaps you should address yourself to Mr. Collins. I um, doubt if Mr. Collins is equipped to give me satisfaction with regard to this inquiry. Then you must take matters into your own hands. And a full. Did you sleep? I was troubled by dreams. I shall leave for Pemberley at once. Oh, but will you breakfast first? No. Please extend me the kindness of putting a carriage at my disposal. Now. There is only one carriage, Mr. Darcy, and the coachman this is... This is intolerable. I can send Elspeth to Meryton. Yes, do. How kind. I shall walk in the grounds until arrangements have been made. Thank you. Normal transmission is resumed. What an insufferable, rude man. Walk with him. Go on, he hates being cooped up. Walk and talk. It's your duty, Lizzie, to try. But I am altered by what I have seen. He's seen it too, but he does not remember it. He discards it as a dream. I shall try. It is the very devil. Hmm. Ragwort is the devil, but this is St. John's wort, see? The leaves are perforated, little pinpricks. This is also the devil, but it is important to call a thing by its proper name, however fiendish. Lady Catherine is come, and Bingley, Bingley is hiding in the garden, and his sister keeps the carriage and will not come out. Mr. Bingley, there is a lady here for you. Moves a pace. Thank God for it. Jane, I need to impart something to you. In my behaviour to your sister, there was never the slight, the very slightest in for my selfishness and vanity, I'm surely damned. Charles. Please, what is done cannot be undone. The worst of it was done by me. No. Who married Mr. Collins? You? Here. Every year, on this day, we will, in our own separate lives, pick a dog rose. It shall be the only sign before God that we were ever in love. And all that shall be. The only sign but this. is far too small. How negligent I am to lack a room fit for public assembly. I shall say what I have to say, and then I shall leave immediately. First, I made it pellucidly clear to you, Mrs. Bennet, over my salt, that I considered the brothers Collins an excellent match for your daughters. Yet you have done nothing to promote the cause. On the contrary, you have abandoned them to a house run by criminally incompetent servants. Well. What do you have to say for yourself? I say this. You are a prig, madam, a panda, and a common bully. And you cheat at cards. Do you suppose you may enter my house and brandish your hat at me thus? I have a mind to turn you upside down and use you to scrape out Ambrosia's sty. Madam, 
I take my leave of you. Do! Or I shall take you out and set to scraping! Scrape, scrape, scrape! I shall go. Tally ho, why? Mrs. Bennet, you must desist. Oh, be quiet, you silly man. Do you suppose Mama would permit her daughters to be married to your brothers when before her very eyes is the specimen of you? Jane! Jane! Mrs. Bennet! That was bloody marvellous! It was refreshing. <laughs> You, come with me. Tonight, Mrs. Bennet, with your permission, I think I shall sleep in our bedroom. <gasps> oh! I am not here to promote the marriage of those torpid priests to those vulgar little girls. The propagation of the Bennets is a tumour that society must cut from its own flesh. I am come to deal with you, Miss Price. You were told that you should not have Darcy, yet still you hurl yourself at his feet in the hope that he will stumble over you, proposing marriage as he falls. Who has been your tutor? Wickham? I should have drilled you better. Less fan, more brain. Land, blood, property, nothing else matters. The needs of the body can be accommodated, the needs of the heart are expendable. Who is that woman? That's Elizabeth Bennet. And the interesting thing about her is, she's the one who's actually going to marry Darcy. What is it that you want? I want Jane not to be married to Collins. <laughs> but that can't be changed. Tell me why I should change it. What do you mean? You're not God. Has the marriage been consummated? No. It hasn't, not yet. Many a man has capacious stables containing nothing but a barrow with a wheel that squeaks. Naturally, one knows the necessary signatories. It could be done. An annulment? <laughs> Why? Why would you do that? To amuse myself. <laughs> to have from you the assurance even from the corner of my eye, I should never glimpse you, Miss Price. Ever. For here and now, you shall undertake to remove yourself from society. Entirely. Are my terms acceptable? You should have been my creature. Quit this house, Fitzwilliam. Repudiate its spawn, or I will see you snubbed and cut to the length and breadth of Christendom. I would leave. But well, I have not yet spoken to Lucy. Drive on! But my brother whips. Your brother is a poodle faking ninny. Let him walk. Drive on! Gaiety, Miss Price. Always gaiety. Chase it. Can we. Can we abort that disgusting noise? Give me Lady Catherine. I have no. Um... <laughs> You understand nothing. Nothing. I can never be with Charles. Why not? Because of society. I'm through with it. Society can go hang. Jane, the day you were at liberty from Collins is the day I take you to America. America? It shall be our newfound land. John Dunn, don't you know? Licence my roving hands, so forth. <laughs> In America, we shall be recreated, married by liberal Episcopalians. 
We shall have 25 children and name them all Amanda. <laughs> Even the boys. <laughs> Until Pemberley. Until Pemberley. I am decided what to do. You told me once to mind my duty. I know not why this is my duty, but I acknowledge it. And so goodbye. returns to Pemberley. I am to visit him there and on. He wishes for me to clarify the types of wort in his meadows and to meet his sister. Good. I can learn to love him. I'm sorry. It's just I see Jane and I... You think marriage to Darcy would be like marriage to Collins? Look... In the book, you don't exactly hit it off to begin with. Just keep talking. From the talking comes the love. Where are you going? Home. One heartbeat do I forget. If I went away again to Hammersmith, should you mind? It would break a mother's heart. Then I cannot go. You face a terrible dilemma, Lizzie. If you return to Hammersmith, you will dismay your mother. And if you remain here, you will disappoint your father. I cannot cling to you all my life, Lizzie. I am dressed as an adult. Sooner or later, I will have to comport myself as one. The time has come for me to tie you well and let you go. We should celebrate. You asked me a question, I answered it. And we didn't have an argument about it. I did not ask you a question. I made an observation. Mr. Price, the confirmation of your identity was entirely superfluous. As a result, we are now arguing about it. And therefore, you are wrong. That's so sweet. You're actually trying to make me laugh. Yes. It shall not occur again. And you're smiling. No, no. I only smile in private.
coming up. We're creating a TV programme that I want people to watch. On the one hand, this should be the real Jane Austen, the unspoken assumptions behind um, Jane Austen's world and her universe. Lost in Austen, behind the scenes, is next on ITV3.